Crosscut saw, used for sawing across the wood grain. The crosscut saw has 910 TPI that cuts on the push stroke. Crosscut saws can also be used for ripping, cutting with the wood grain. Rip saw, used exclusively for maximum efficiency at ripping, cutting with, or along the grain. At about 5 TPI, it also cuts on the push stroke, but produces a much rougher cut than a crosscut saw. Back saw, used for precise finish cuts. The back saw is shorter than the crosscut saw and has smaller teeth at 13-15 TPI. Back saws are also called miter, tenon, or finish saws. Back saws are often used with a miter box that guides the blade and allows a high degree of accuracy on straight or angled cuts. Back saws have a rigid steel backbone along the top edge of the blade to prevent the blade from bending from side to side during the cut. Coping saw, used for creating a curved cut. The coping saw is distinctive for its ushipped frame and narrow blade with a high point count of small teeth, 15 to 32 TPI, for finish cutting. Hacksaw, makes straight line cuts in metal. The hacksaw can have a rigid or adjustable frame that accommodates different blades, depending on the application. The teeth of the hacksaw blade are made from hardened steel with varying numbers of teeth, blades with fewer and larger teeth allow a hacksaw to remove more metal in a single pass. Soft, wide materials need a 14 TPI blade, while harder materials need an 18 TPI or greater blade. For cutting pipe, tubing, conduit, or metal of an unusual shape, use a blade that keeps two or more teeth in contact with the wall of the surface, such as a 24 or 32 TPI blade. As a general rule, the harder the metal you are cutting, the greater TPI your blade should have. Compass saw, used for cutting circles and curves in flat surfaces, such as holes for plumbing or electrical conduit to pass through subfloor. Compass saws have a long, narrow, tapering blade to allow the blade to maneuver in tight curves. And may have 812 TPI, depending on the specific application. The keyhole saw is a lighter duty version of the compass saw and is used for cutting holes in drywall. Shears, snips. Shears, or snips, often called metal or tin shears, are useful for cutting thin, soft metal. They operate with a cutting action similar to regular scissors, and are best for relatively short cuts. To make a smooth, continuous cut, open the jaws of the snips all the way, and place the sheet of metal all the way back against the jaws. Using hand pressure only, squeeze the handles together to cut until the cut advances to a little over half the distance to the tip of the snips. Then advance the shears and repeat the process. Figure 8.4 shows a pair of metal snips. Cutting torch Another way to cut metal is to burn through it with a cutting torch. The oxyacetylene torch uses a special cutting attachment that forms a flame fed by a mixture of oxygen and acetylene gases, see figure 8. 5. A cutting torch is useful for cutting holes and curved or straight lines in metal that is too hard or thick for shears or saws. Because a cutting torch is very hot and uses flammable gas, you must exercise extreme caution. Point the flame only where you are doing the work, and always wear the proper safety clothing, such as a face mask, gloves, and a welding apron, to protect yourself from flying sparks. Caution Cutting torch Shaping tools To round out your review of cutting and shaping tools, you need to know a bit about planes, chisels, files, and routers. Figure 8.6 gives an illustration of each type of shaping tool and the list that follows provides descriptions of each. 1. Plane Plane, pushed with the grain, a plane slices off thin layers of wood from the surface of a board. It is an essential finishing tool when you need a precise fit with wood applications. The blade is adjustable to allow you to control how much wood it removes. Planes come in several sizes. Chisel a wood chisel is used to shape wood, perform inside cuts that a plane or saw cannot reach, smooth surfaces. And otherwise remove material so that two parts will fit together. The wood chisel is a simple handheld tool with a single cutting edge and a flat head that can be pushed by hand or struck with a mallet when making cuts. A cold chisel is a hardened steel bar that has one end ground to a cutting edge, while the other end is flattened so that you can hit it with a hammer to cut or shape metal.
Cold chisels are exclusively for use in metalworking tasks. File, these hardened, flat steel bars have rows of cutting teeth that smooth or shape by manual grinding. The cutting edges on a single cut file run in only one direction, whereas double cut files have two cross hatched cutting edges. The cutting edges can be close together for smoothing or polishing, or they can be far apart for removing more material with a single pass. Files are also useful for sharpening other tools, such as axes or lawnmower blades. Router, used to shape and form edge contours, cut grooves and dados, a wide slot that is cut across the wood grain, and trim laminate material. Routers use a cylindrical cutting blade that is driven by a motor, and can be handheld or table mounted. Drilling tools. Drilling is the process of cutting a hole into a material. In this section, we review the tools and inserts, bits, used for drilling. Figure 8.7 illustrates three types of drilling tools. The following list describes those tools. 1. Hand drill, used for drilling small holes. The hand drill can be used to make pilot holes for nails or screws, or for countersinking. This simple drill has a handle, a chuck into which the drill bit is secured and a crank that you turn by hand to turn the drill bit. Brace, used for driving bits. The brace is a kind of hand drill that is excellent for boring wide holes because its design provides powerful leverage for the drilling, boring. Process. Boring is a term used to describe cutting a hole that is larger than one fourth inch. Power drill, increases the work efficiency for drilling tasks. This drill can be adjusted to varying degrees of torque and speed powered by an electric motor. The power drill is a real-time saver on repetitive work. In addition to using bits for drilling holes, you can use bits for screws and hex head bolts. Drill bits. After you select your drilling tool, you need to choose the appropriate drill bit for your job. The bit is the working surface of the drill that comes in contact with the material. Some common types of drill bits that you need to know are the twist, auger, spade, forstner, reamer, tap, and die. Figure 8.8 .8 shows you each of these drill bits. A description of each follows the figure.